established kids, really exciting to be gathering with you in this way. Hopefully you've joined in our Zoom chat earlier and um, where we've been able to see each other's faces and catch up on the week just been. Um, we're super excited to have you here in this church service. Um, hopefully you've been able to sit in with mum and dad and in just a minute you'll be able to sing some songs with them at the end as we worship our great God together. I wanted to share with you one of my very favorite stories and it's from the book of John. If you're in primary, you've probably been thinking about the way that Jesus um, did lots of miracles that displayed his power. We've been thinking about the way that Jesus is the incredible son of God, fully God, fully man. And this one here is called the one o'clock miracle. It's by Alison Mitchell and Catalina Ev Echeverry. And it's a true story about trusting in the words of Jesus. Really exciting. I hope you enjoy it. Some of you might even be able to read along at home. Long, long ago, there lived an important man who worked for the king. He was sad and so, so worried. His son was very ill, so ill that he was going to die and no one could help him. You can see about where, they're, where they're from just by what he's holding in his hand. He heard that a man named Jesus was doing the most amazing, wonderful things. He heard that Jesus was making ill people well again. We saw this miracle where Jesus made the lame man walk. He heard that Jesus was doing things that only God can do. What about this miracle, water into wine? Or maybe the blind man to see? So the man decided to ask Jesus for help. The man and his son lived in Capernaum by the sea. But Jesus was staying in Cana, more than 20 miles away. It was a very long walk and uphill on the way. Have you ever been on a long walk uphill? The man had decided that he must see Jesus. So he said goodbye to his son and his family and he set off to see Jesus. <gasps> up the hill he walked and walked and sometimes ran because he wanted so badly to see Jesus. This sign here says Capernaum, 500 miles that way. Cana, 10,000 miles the other. The sun went down, the night was dark and the stars were bright, but the man didn't stop. Huffing and puffing, he walked and walked and sometimes ran, hurrying to see Jesus. He's stopping for a drink just here. The sun came up, the morning arrived, but there was still a long, long way to go. Puffing and panting, the man walked and walked and sometimes ran because he needed to see Jesus. He's almost there along in the rain. At last, at one o'clock in the afternoon, the man reached Cana, the town where Jesus was. He had walked and walked and sometimes ran. And now at last he could see Jesus. Please, sir, he said, my son is dying. Please come with me. Please make him better. The man knew that if Jesus came with him and touched his son, the boy would be well again. You see him bowing down at Jesus' feet. But Jesus just said, go. What? Go home without Jesus? After all that walking and even running to get Jesus to come? But Jesus hadn't finished. Go, Jesus said. And then he added, your son will live. How would you feel if you'd come all that way and Jesus sent you home? Just saying that the miracle had happened. The man believed him. Jesus wasn't going to come to the man's home. He wasn't going to touch the boy to make him well. But the man still trusted that what Jesus said was true. Down the hill he walked 
and walked and sometimes ran because he believed Jesus. He's remembering those words. Your son will live. The night was dark and the moon shone brightly. The man felt so, so tired. But on and on he walked and sometimes ran because he trusted Jesus. The sun came up. A new morning arrived and still he walked and walked. Though his back ached and his legs were very, very tired. On he walked and walked and sometimes ran because he was sure Jesus would make his son well. There he is remembering that his son will live. Then far away in the distance, he saw some men. They came closer and closer. They were his servants. <gasps> they must have news, he thought. But what would it be? Sir, they said, it's your son. He is alive. He's well again. The man was bursting for joy. When, the man asked, when did he get better? Yesterday at one o'clock in the afternoon. One o'clock? One o'clock? The man replied. Then the man remembered it was one o'clock when he saw Jesus. It was one o'clock when Jesus said that his son would live and it was one o'clock when his son got better. Jesus didn't need to go to see the boy. He didn't need to walk and walk. He didn't have to run. Jesus simply spoke. And just like that, the boy was better. Wow, only Jesus could do that. And do you know why? Because Jesus is God's son. Happy and smiling, the man walked home and sometimes ran to see his son again. And he told his son and his family about Jesus and how Jesus could do things only God can do. And they all believed in Jesus, God's son too. Your son will live. And now that the man's son was well, what could he do? He could smile and he could laugh. He could walk and he could run and all because of Jesus. It's pretty amazing that Jesus would do that for this man's son. Even though he was so sick and unwell from afar, Jesus could speak and the boy was well. This is a story from the book of John and it's from John chapter 4 verses 46 to 54. So if you want to look it up with your mums and dads or even look it up by yourself now with brothers and sisters, you might be able to read it for yourself because this account of healing, of Jesus healing the royal official son is an amazing one that was written down for us by John to remember just how powerful Jesus is. It says here, it's one of the seven miracles that John writes about in his gospels. At the end of his book, John tells us just how the miracles are like seduction are like signposts that point us to Jesus. They show us who Jesus really is and that Jesus is the Son of God, God's promised rescuer king, the Christ. You can read that part of John's gospel in John chapter 20, verses 30 to 31. It might even be a good memory verse that I'll challenge you to over the coming weeks. This is a great story about just how powerful Jesus is. Maybe you could act it out with your brothers and sisters. I'm going to attach a link for a coloring in page and an activity down below so that you can do that before you sing with your mums and dads. And I hope you're doing really well, established kids. How about I pray so that we can remember just how good and gracious Jesus is and that he is powerful to save. Dear God, Thank you that you are powerful and that you sent Jesus to be the promised Savior who had the power to rescue us from sin and to do miracles that pointed us to him as your son. Help us to trust in him and to trust that you are good to us always. In Jesus' name, amen. See you soon.